You know that thing in movies where someone's on an operating table, mask comes down, everything gets blurry, and then next thing you know, they're crying and blabbing something really embarrassing about their childhood to the post-op recovery nurses? Well, that's... Okay, that's kind of true. But what's actually going on in your brain and body when you go under is way stranger and a lot more carefully choreographed than Hollywood ever shows you. Because anesthesia, well, it's not quite sleep and it's not quite death. It's more like, like time travel, but you can only jump forward. I'm Dr. Daniel Medell, an anesthesiologist, and today I'm pulling back the surgical drape on what really happens when you go under anesthesia and why it's one of the weirdest science tricks humans pull off on a daily basis. Anesthesia is basically a reversible off switch for certain parts of your nervous system. But there's more than one flavor of anesthesia. There's local anesthesia, which numbs a small area like when you go to the dentist, that's local. There's regional anesthesia, which numbs a bigger zone like an arm or a leg or an epidural given during childbirth where your whole lower body basically goes offline. And there's general anesthesia, total unconsciousness, no movement, no pain, and no memory. Today, we're mostly gonna be talking about general anesthesia the one people are often most nervous about, because it involves shutting down your brain's perception of reality in a way that's both precise and reversible. If you've had it, then you know the routine. You're wheeled into a bright operating room full of beeping machines. There are way more people in there than you expected. And then someone in scrubs and a mask says, okay, just take some nice deep breaths and soon you'll drift off to sleep. In the same tone you'd use to tell a dog you're going to the park when you're really going to the vet. Now you might get meds through an IV that work within seconds, or you might breathe in anesthetic gases through a mask, which take a couple of minutes to work. For most people, the last thing they remember is maybe counting backwards from 10, but what's happening inside your body is a cascade of events. For example, there's sedation where your awareness starts to fade, then there's loss of memory where your hippocampus stops storing new events. There's loss of consciousness where your brain's communication networks basically go offline for real world input, and there's immobility and pain control, where your spinal cord and pain pathways are suppressed, so you don't feel what the surgeons are doing, you don't jump off the table. All this happens in about a minute, and the weirdest part is, you don't feel yourself losing consciousness, because there's no consciousness there to feel anything. One second you're in the room, and the next you're waking up wondering if anything happened at all. General anesthesia doesn't just turn off your brain like a light bulb, more like a series of network outages. Your brain is made up of billions of neurons talking to each other in these intricate patterns. Anesthesia drugs target these communication patterns in several ways. For example, drugs like propofol crank up GABA activity. GABA is a neurotransmitter that basically tells neurons to relax, which quiets brain activity. Drugs like ketamine block NMDA receptors, which inhibits excitatory signals, preventing neurons from overfiring. And opioids like morphine and fentanyl intercept pain messages before they have a chance to reach the brain. The result is that your thalamus, which normally acts like a traffic cop for sensory information, stops letting most signals through. And your cortex, the part that gives you conscious awareness, loses its rhythm, so you lose consciousness. And here's something strange. Brain scans of people under anesthesia look different from those of people who are just sleeping. During sleep, your brain cycles through predictable phases of brainwave activity, but under anesthesia, those cycles are disrupted or completely absent. You're not just in a deep sleep, you're in a pharmacological blackout. A lot of people think anesthesia just knocks you out so that you don't feel any pain, but memory suppression is just as important. If you are somehow aware but paralyzed during surgery, yes, that's a very rare complication known as intraoperative awareness, it would be terrifying. So anesthetic drugs also make sure your brain can't record what's happening. So even if your brain does receive a few stray signals, there's no footage to play back later. Now the anesthesiologist or nurse anesthetist isn't just a person who sends you off to dreamland and then goes to grab a coffee. They're your life support pilot. During the entire surgery, they're continuously monitoring your oxygen and CO2 levels, heart rate and blood pressure, adjusting drug levels second by second, watching for subtle changes in your body's responses and anticipating problems before they happen. It's more like flying a plane than hitting sleep mode on your laptop. You don't just take off and walk away. You're making constant micro adjustments until you're safely back on the ground. Here's another surprise. Waking up from anesthesia is not like waking up from a nap. Once the drugs start wearing off, your brain's networks begin reconnecting and coming back online, but not all at once. 
you'll almost certainly feel groggy or confused. Your sense of time is usually scrambled as it feels like you were just wheeled into the OR a few minutes ago. Some people have wild dreams or hallucinations, and occasionally you might say some unfiltered things. Nurses could write whole books about what people blurt out after surgery. That's why it pays to be nice to them in pre-op. So is anesthesia dangerous? Well, in healthy people, modern anesthesia is extremely safe. The risk of a fatal complication is way lower than your risk of dying in a car crash on the way to the hospital. But there are still considerations. People with certain heart, lung, or neurological issues do have higher risks for complications. Allergic reactions to medications or breathing problems can happen. And rarely, people experience post-operative cognitive issues, especially in older adults. And the myths? You can get stuck and never wake up. Not really, unless there's another unrelated medical catastrophe. Anesthesia is just deep sleep. No, it's a totally different brain state like we talked about earlier. They steal your soul. Well, it definitely inhibits your conscious self temporarily, but what that means philosophically, I'll let you decide. Think about this. In just over 150 years, we've gone from surgeons operating on screaming, restrained, awake patients to being able to stop pain, prevent the recording of traumatic memories, and control consciousness itself, all while keeping you alive and stable. It's one of the few times in life where we literally hand over our existence to another person, trusting they'll return us safely. And the fact that they almost always do, I think that's pretty amazing. So the next time you or someone you know needs surgery, remember, going under isn't just falling asleep. It's a precisely executed but reversible hijacking of your body and brain. And if you wake up saying something embarrassing, well, don't worry, it's actually a HIPAA violation to upload patient videos to TikTok, thank God. Anyway, hit like if you learned something today, subscribe for more science and medicine breakdowns, and drop a comment telling me the weirdest or funniest thing you've heard someone say after waking up from anesthesia. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.